Hey guys, today it's all about alkalinity with your tank. I'm still getting questions from reef keepers who are having difficulty balancing this and I'll use mine as an example today. So just before the video today, I said, well, I better test my alkalinity to see what I'm dealing with so I can relay that information over to you guys. And much to my surprise, my alkalinity is quite high. Put simply, the alkalinity of a solution refers to its capacity to buffer against drops in pH. So the higher alkalinity you have, the more stable your pH can be. So increased alkalinity can help calcify your corals with a lower pH. Relating alkalinity to your calcium, you want them to be in balance and equilibrium. So you can have a very high alkalinity as long as it's in equilibrium with your calcium or balanced. In this chart here, you'll see an alkalinity and corresponding calcium level that would be balanced in your salt water. As you can see, if you have a low DKH, you can see the corresponding calcium. So you have 1.4 DKH and 350 calcium. At the high end, you have 16.1 DKH and 475 parts per million calcium. These would be the ideal ranges. So what you would do is measure your alkalinity and calcium and see where they are in terms of balance. The first thing I do is I test my salt water mix for calcium and alkalinity. So my alkalinity was 13 dKH and when I tested my calcium, it was 450. So I'm within that range, if you refer back to the chart, which is in equilibrium. Let's say you have a high DKH. Let's just say you're in the 12 range, but your calcium is around 375. So now you're not balanced, and what can we do? I prefer doing nothing, and what I mean by doing nothing, I mean that over time, your alkalinity will reduce if you're not adding any kind of buffers or two parts or calquasser. So stop doing anything. You can do a larger size water change which will help balance this because now you're putting in balanced salt water into your imbalanced aquarium. Once you see your aquarium water coming into balance, then you can begin to add your two-part or your calquasser, but go slow so the same thing doesn't occur again. If you're adding calquasser to your tank, you want to go very slow in the beginning. If you're using your ATO to implement the calquasser, go very slow and make sure you test frequently. The other option in this situation with a higher DKH, as I said 12 and a low calcium, is to add calcium only, but you have to be careful. It's calcium only, that would be calcium chloride, something that is not going to add any kind of alkalinity to the tank. So by adding calquasser, you're just going to exasperate the problem because that adds alkalinity also. Let's reverse the situation. Let's say you have a lower DKH of five or six or seven and your calcium is very high, 475, maybe even a little higher. In that situation, I would stop adding anything. You could do a water change with balanced fresh salt water, which would probably raise your DKH 
and possibly lower your calcium somewhat. I hope this was helpful, guys.